Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity C Sharp bite sized tutorial. In today's video, I'll be covering coroutines as a way to have logic that lasts longer than one frame. This is useful for effects such as fading or maybe grabbing some data from the internet. I hope you're looking forward to it. Let's get started. As usual, I've made a folder for this. So we've got the coroutines folder with a scene. Okay, I've got one script, coroutine example, and we've got the player that has the coroutine example script on them. Let's jump into the code. So I've created an example that we could still make in the update loop, but it would require more code, it'd be more complex, and it's probably even uh, less performant in this example because we'd have some logic saying um, if we're scaling down, then shrink the player every frame, and then as soon as we have shrunk, uh, we'd have to say then like, okay, change this boolean or change this enum. So now we're in the pause state, and when we're in the pause state, do nothing, but then we also need to know how long we've been in that state for, and then after that we need to say, okay, now scale up, and that would all be in the update and it would be a mess. If we just use a simple coroutine to schedule all this, it makes our lives a lot easier. So for the script, I've got a duration of two, I set it to. Okay, this is for the example in a minute, but I'll show you an even simpler example first. Uh, all we want to do is, uh, in the update loop, we say if we didn't press space, then return. But if we did press space, then start this coroutine, okay? Now what does it do? Well, we're going to make it start off by debug.logging uh, high, okay? And then let's say debug.log by. But then maybe uh, between this, we want a pause, okay? Now, if you wanted to do that in the update loop, maybe a pause of one second, you then have to make a timer up in the class here. You have to make a private float timer, whatever. And then you'd have to manage that timer and say if the timer, da da da. But in a coroutine, you just have to say yield, return, new, wait for seconds, and then one second, okay? So what it's going to do is, it's basically basically going to start running this function here, okay? Start coroutine. If you're doing a coroutine, you have to start it with start coroutine, and the return type has to be iNumerator, okay? Those are the two conditions. And then also, technically, you need to have at least one yield statement, and yield is telling it, basically, this is where we're going to pause. So coroutines, just like normal functions, you call them, and their uh, lines of code key getting executed in the same frame until you hit a yield statement, okay? And then once you hit a yield statement, it returns, so it effectively um, ends here. And then in the next frame, it picks back up here. So we're saying, okay, log high, and then we stop for this frame. And then basically until one second has passed, so we'll keep coming back here and checking how long has passed. As soon as one second has passed, we can then continue and log by, okay? So if we go test that. Okay, so look at the console. If we press space here, okay. Hi, bye. Hi, bye. Hi. Bye. So we get that one second pause, and that pause can be whatever we like it to be. Okay, now if I say pause, uh, sorry, if I press space three times, one, two, three, okay, we get three, and then three more. So if you want to limit it so that uh, whilst this is happening, you can't do it again, you'll just have to maybe have a boolean, okay? So for example, uh, private bool is logging equals false. Whoops, let's undo. And then what we'll do is we'll say, uh, is logging equals true and is logging equals false okay and then up here we'll just say um, or is logging so if we didn't press the space key or we're currently logging then return so now what it'll do is it'll then allow me to restart and if I press space it happens like normal but if I spam it it doesn't happen okay it only happens once it's done, which is perfect. So that's a simple example with logging, but let's give a more practical example. So let's get into the scaling example. Let's change is logging to be is scaling. Okay, so it makes more sense. And then we'll get rid of the two logging parts. So what we'll do is we'll still keep this one second pause between um, the two things happening. So here we'll do scale down and then here we'll do uh, scale up. So we'll have a bit where the player shrinks from a scale of one to zero, then here a scale of zero to one. Now, as I said before, all this logic could be written in the update loop, but I wouldn't recommend it just because the logic will be a lot more complicated. And then you'll have to have more variables up here in your class. At least if we have a timer for this, which we will need, then we can just store it locally inside this method. So it just makes it a lot better. Speaking of, we'll make it now. So float timer equals zero F. Okay, so we've got a timer that starts at zero and we'll say while, okay. So remember in a while loop, uh, whatever code you write in here keeps going while this condition is true. So while the timer is less than the duration, duration being the float we set up here. So uh, timer is zero, duration is two. So while zero is less than two, we want to increase the timer value until it gets to two. So timer plus equals time to delta time. 
and then we want to yield return null. Now what yield return null does is just like yield return wait for one second, um, it just means basically wait till next frame. So we're going to run this code until we get to here, okay? As soon as we hit this line, we stop for this frame, and then when we get back to next frame, we'll continue here. So the next frame will say, okay, is timer still less in duration? If it is, do this again, return wait to the next frame. So every frame we just keep doing this loop until timer is greater than or equal to duration. And then we'll wait for a second and then we'll start doing the other part. Now in between this, we actually want to do something as well as increasing the timer. So we'll say, let's scale the object. So transform.local scale. We want to go smoothly from, so we're going to vector free lerp. I'll do a separate video on vector freeze and how this all works. But essentially, we're going to go between the vector A and the vector B by the float T. So we want to go between vector free dot one to be vector free dot zero. So we're going to go from one to zero. And then this value here tells us how far between each one we should go. So if we put, put zero here, it's going to return vector free dot one. If we put one here, it's going to return vector free dot zero. If we put 0 0.5, it'll give us the value between, so it'll be like vector free 0 0.5 effectively. Um, so we want this value here to be uh, dynamic. It's going to be timer over duration, okay? So it's like the percentage way between the two. So the closer we are to the start of the timer, the closer we are to vector free one, and the closer we are to finishing the timer to being near, near the duration, then we'll uh, be closer to zero. So it basically shrinks. Now, because time.delta time is about how long the last frame took or the time since the last frame, it means that uh, this value might be bigger than the difference between these two values. So the problem is uh, when we add to timer, timer might actually go over duration, which means that this value might be something like 1.1, meaning that this then goes negative, it actually goes past this value. So what we want is we want here to say, once we're done, set the transforms local scale to be uh, vector free dot zero, okay? And then we want to do the same thing back over here. So if we simply copy paste this, we don't need to redefine the timer. We just need to reset the timer and we'll go between vector 3.0 to vector 3.1. So we're just going to flip that around and then check this, uh, change this to be one. And now we've got our entire logic here. It's a lot simpler than if we did it in update. Uh, I'll quickly go through it. We want to say is scaling is true so that we can't be scaling when we're already scaling. So we don't get it going on twice. Then we say, uh, make a timer for zero. Okay, and while it's less than two or whatever value you use here, then we'll just keep increasing that value or we'll keep going up and up and up, which means in this case, the scale will go down and down and down. Okay, and then every frame we uh, just skip to the next frame on this loop. And then once we're done, uh, we make sure it's set to be exactly zero rather than slightly off from zero. We then wait an entire one second just for the sake of it, right? Just to show you how it works. And then once one second has passed, we then reset the timer. And then we go up again from zero to two or whatever, uh, keep increasing the time. And then we set the scale, instead of going from one to zero, we go from zero to one. So we shrink and then in this part, we go back up to one. And then once we're done, make sure it's exactly at one. And then set a scaling to false. So that means we can start it all again. Let's give it a test. So if I press spacebar, the player shrinks. Okay, and then it stops for one second. Then it goes back up again and then it's done. Okay, if I spam press it, it doesn't keep happening. It only happens once. Okay, and we can easily change any of this. If I change the duration in the middle to be five seconds, then it would shrink. Wait five seconds, continue. Okay, you see the whole point of coroutines is to really sequence something. Uh, the update loop isn't really for sequencing, but this makes so much more sense, right? Because you would imagine if we tried to do this in update, yeah, this timer, we'd have to store it up here. And then we'd have to uh, remember that this timer exists out of this method. Uh, the best thing about this is we keep it enclosed in here. Our entire logic is in this method. The only thing that's out of here is, is scaling, okay? That's a value we set uh, in the method to be used out of it. And that's simply just so that we know to only start the coroutine when, uh, we're, when we're not already doing it. Now you could technically put the uh, is scaling logic in here. So you could say at the start, uh, if is scaling, whatever. Um, and then basically just don't do the coroutine, but I feel like it's better to actually just not start the coroutine at all I think it's more performant as well. But yeah, I hope you found this video useful If you did then please leave a like and subscribe Let me know down below what you want to see next if you need any help also ask me down below Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you guys next time and goodbye But of course before I go I've got to thank my patrons a special thanks to John Selig, Liz Kimber, Drandy, Zoran, David Madurma, Exit, Josh Folsom, Bidodai, Dustin Miller, Rack, Yoris Letter, Rene and Remy Baldwin if anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. 
If not, there are also links down below to other social media such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our website. If you could help us out by checking out any of those, following in any of those, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye.